Hey everyone! Is it today or was it yesterday? Uh, first day of summer. Happy summer! I hope you guys are all having a really good summer and um, I'm definitely thinking about all of you and uh, I wanted to try and get this video out today to uh, to let you guys know of uh, some things that I am seeing out there as I'm coaching people. And uh, I'm so, so blessed to be coaching. You guys are uh, are keeping me busy. <laughs> and uh, hi, thanks for joining me today. And uh, I really hope you guys are, are enjoying yourself, having a good summer, trying to, uh, trying to get through... Uh, you know, if you're going through some bad times here, I really hope that you're you're trying to uh, to get through it as best you can. Well, I always tend to see some trends and some things that are going on for people, and uh, it's time. You know, it's this is this is time to talk about this subject tonight with all of you, as it is pretty fresh in my heart and on my mind, and. It's, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about this. Well, I believe, I, I definitely speak about how the narcissist is a dangerous person. I've spoke about that very often, very frequently, about what they are capable of. And if they are a narcissist, what they can bring into your life. That the, I talk about the fact that I believe that they are truly capable of, of harming you. They are, they are, they all have it in them to hurt you, uh, to snap and to physically attack you. They have that. So we've talked about the dangers of that, but one of the dangers that we don't talk about too often, and it is something I am seeing. It, it is a, is it a, it is a trend I am seeing with the people I'm working with. It is something that happened to me. It is something that I still uh, find that I have to work on. It is something that you got to work on like you would, like anything else. It, you have to put the time and effort into maintaining this and to trying to get better at it and to trying to fix what has happened here. And th that is the one of the most dangerous things that a narcissist has done to you now. And that, that scariest thing that they have done is they have uh, stripped away your identity. They've stripped away your own God-given identity. The thing that makes you, you. Your own spirit. Your own spirit. Your own identity. The thing about you that makes you who you are. They will rip that from you. And what is this? Well, you know, the, the bigger picture of it is they have torn apart, apart your self-esteem, your self-awareness, you know, your ability to even, to even have self-awareness, uh, making decisions for yourself, uh, understanding who you are you they have stripped away your own god-given identity and that that my friends is really really scary all right and it gets to this point okay i'm telling you i lived it i was that shell of a human being that no longer looked in the mirror and recognized myself. Who am I? Yeah, I remember that. I remember those moments. Who am I? And it's truly a scary experience. And this is what these people are doing to you guys. Your self-esteem has taken a complete plunge. Many of you, including when I went through this myself, do not know the value of your worth. You see yourself through other people's lenses and, and many of them are the narcissists that have been in your life. 
and the ways that they have cut you down make these underlying backhanded comments to you try to give you these little seeds of doubt try to make you think you're not as talented as you as as you think you are you're not as pretty as you think you are you're not as smart as you think you are you're not as uh you know as 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 uh, wise as you think you are You're not as good as your job as you think you are. They do these little subtle things. And they can do them as subtly as just not even listening to you when you're talking about how you you were a rock star at work today and you went into this meeting and you felt good about what you did. They're not even listening to you and they're doing it on purpose. They know what they're doing. They know they have to cut you down to make themselves feel like they are more worthy. If you are a good person and you do good things and you got a lot going for you, well, the narcissist can't have any of this. So they have to cut you down. This is the name of the game. They're going to cut you down so that they can build themselves up. That's the name of the narcissist game. But many of you have forgotten this and you're at this place in your life and you believe that you're not as, as, as valuable and worthy and amazing and gifted as you truly are. And it's a serious problem, guys. And if you stay around toxic people long enough, this is what goes on. You've lost your identity. And when you've lost your God-given identity, you've lost the path you're going down. You don't have self-discovery any longer. You don't know what your goals are any longer. You don't even understand your talents. You don't even see yourself in the mirror the same way you once did. And this is really bad. Okay? So... Many of you, I want to, I want you to understand that this is what's happening. Now, it gets even deeper. It gets even deeper. It can get so deep that you are, are becoming a very toxic person yourself. Morals, values, standards that you once had, all right, you're losing some of you. You get so bad, you get so wrapped up in this, you get you go so far with this that you're losing control. You're losing your own identity. You are you are going low in the vibrational. You know, your your vibrations are going lower like the narc. And it's scary, guys. All right, I went through this. I wouldn't be sitting here preaching to the choir, okay? I went through this. I honestly think it is the hardest thing that I've had to overcome in order all of and all of the years of all of the narcissists that have been a part of my life since I was a child because they're always trying to tell you who you are what you what you're capable of what you're not capable of what you can do what you can't do in every aspect of your life because that's the kind of that's how they are able to breathe and sleep and be a narcissist. It's by cutting other people down. And that's how it goes. When they're after. you, I've talked about this. But I'm going to say. I, I always repeat myself. I, I just need to repeat myself a lot in videos. Because for some of you. This will be the first video you see. And the, re, the repetition is necessary in this community. Because of what's going on. In your mind. The repetition has to happen. Well, when they're coming for your spirit like this and they are destroying your God-given identity and spirit and your self-esteem, what they ultimately want 
I saw one of your comments. I just read that the word soul. I didn't see the whole thing. But yes, they, they're coming for your soul. They want your soul. They're soul collectors. They are a black vessel, a black hole. They are the, they are literally black hole sun. And they're coming. They, they want to collect. They want to collect others with them. They want to drag others into that dimension, into that low vibrating dimension. So that's why you're not acting yourself. That's why you don't recognize yourself. That's why you're having trouble having self-esteem in the workplace, when you go out of work, when you're going out, when you're, you know, trying to go back to your old talents and hobbies and you got that little nagging voice telling you, oh, you know, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You know what, guys? I was... uh For many of you that don't know, you might not know, I started, I started performing. I mean, my parents had my brother and I, uh, I was, I was dancing when I was three years old. I danced up until I was 18 years old. I did tap, jazz, ballet, modern, lyrical, you name it. I was, I was really into it. Um, and at a young age, you're getting on stage. Okay. There's, there's a lot of good things to this for a young lady, you know, a young child. And there is a lot of aspects about this that gets really dark. Okay. So I, you know, I'm learning at a young age. Oh, Hey, you know, I have these talents and people, people praise you for these talents and, Oh, Hey, you know, if you dance and and you're good at it and you and then you know then then they start making you compete and you're doing these competitions you know well then uh we started with acting my parents recognized my brother and I had had acting skills they they got us involved in acting at a young age and then the next thing you know my brother at sick in 6th grade was was ripping through a guitar that kid just picked up the guitar and he could play well by the time i was 14 he asked me to join his band, and I didn't think I could even sing. And he's like, yeah, just come, you know. He's, he was 17 years old in this cover band, making more money than, uh, you know. And next thing you know, I join his band. Next thing you know, I'm 18 years old, I'm in college, and we're trying to take this band thing seriously. And... Now we have to work amongst the animals, the animals in the, in the, in the music industry, the animals that are, are, are literally there. It's, it's a lot of men at the time. A lot of men were the managers. The men were the eight, were the agents. Record labels were, were a lot of men. And it was, you have to have a certain look about you. You got to be even attractive before anyone's even going to take you seriously. So I went through all these I went through all the eras. I mean, we're talking from 1996, okay, when I'm 14 years old in high school. So what is the point of the story? Well, I constantly was scrutinized, looked at through the through the lens. One person would say, you are the best thing since life's bread. The next person would tell you, you are. You got to do this, that, and the other thing. I remember narc number one. I'll never forget this. Part of my whole stage performance before I learned how to how to play instruments and I was just the lead singer. Part of my stage performance was me being me. I was making jokes. I was being silly. I, I wrote songs that were funny. And that was my thing. And I remember narc number one. I'm creeping over after my show, you know, it's really good, you know, you know, you know, you're good, you know, you're good, but I got to tell you something, you got to choose one or the other, you can't be pretty and funny at the same time, it doesn't work in a band, now, back in, back then, while we were we were doing this thing, and for those of you that know my story with the, with the whole band thing and trying to make it, it was many years of this, many years on the road, many years touring, many different lineups. 
I learned how to play bass guitar. I, I learned how to play drums, bass, keys. Just all, all for the sole fact that I wanted to get these other people out of the band because they didn't want to tour. They didn't want to do anything. They were lazy. So I said, I'll learn myself. But you're constantly under the lens of somebody telling you what you are, what you're not, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. And everybody's got an opinion. And you're, and, and if you're going to be on stage and you're going to do these things and you're going to, then you're, then this is what you're, you're going to have to go through. I had to have thick skin through all that. But I think it did play a major part in me taking on these people as partners. You know, the three narcs in my life were also musicians. <laughs> they didn't have that other balance to them, okay? They, they you know... They didn't have the compassion. It, it was all the narcissism, all about the look at me, all about the quick, the quick look at me. Uh, you know, I hardly have any talent myself, but uh, here I am. I can play an instrument on stage, and that's what the, the, the three narcs in my life were all about. They, they, they didn't, they didn't practice. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't work hard towards anything. They were just trying to ride off at you know either my coattails, my brother's coattails. We went through a lot. I remember we got signed. We got signed to MySpace Records. <laughs> remember, remember when MySpace had a record company? Yeah. We got signed literally like a week. It was like a week or two weeks later. MySpace went under. <laughs> I mean, we had a lot of slaps in the face and a lot of, and a lot of, you know, we went through a lot. It was good though. It was good and bad. A lot of lot of good experiences, a lot of bad experiences. Especially as a female. Especially as a female. I could go on and on and on about this. But what I'm trying to explain is you guys go through these, you know, you go through these experiences and you try to tie in like what, you know. And as I'm sitting here and it's and it's been a hard road for me, guys. It's been a very hard road. There's been a there's been a couple years here where I'm kind of disgusted as a as a whole by the whole music industry. It brought me a lot of bad people in my life, but also brought me some really good people. I got so sick of chasing my own tail and I stopped. I stopped many years ago and I realized, well, you know, I'm going to either do this because I really love to do it or I'm going to figure out a way to make money doing it. And it's a hard thing. I've gone through a lot of ups and downs with this. A lot of trying to figure out, do I even want to go back into that? God gave me a gift and a talent. So I should be using it. So I struggle with this. But the self-esteem part, I know all ties in. It all tied in. It all had its its part in, in all of this in my story. And I recognize the struggle out there in as a community with people that have been involved with narcissistic people that are that are love to have their the you know their their hands in the dirt they love to they love to have your their hands in your cake and and trying to figure out you know how can i how can i um put this person down and how can i make them feel less than what they are I've heard some horror stories. I've heard, I've heard of people, uh, the narcissist knowing about your talents and strengths, and 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 literally telling telling uh, some of my clients and people I work with, oh, I don't like when you when you play the guitar because it actually just makes me feel bad because I don't know how to play an instrument. Someone says something like that to you, you need to run. You need to run. Putting these little thoughts in your head about things you're interested in, passions that you have. Oh, you know, I don't really, I'm not really into that, or I'm not really into this, or I don't really like that. And then as we all know, the, you know, the, the narcissist is notorious for really, really working on people's self-esteem with the triangulation game. 
cheating on you, comparing you to other people, flirting with other people right in front of you, not doing anything for you, just living with you as you pay for their existence. This is all part of what they're doing. Just to get you to stop shining. Stop shining. Hey. I'm losing, I'm losing light here. Stop shining. Okay? Dwell with me in the shadows, in the darkness that, that I do. Come, come live that way with me. You can't be better than me. You can't shine and make me feel bad about my miserable existence because I don't do anything with myself in my life. I just sit here in the shadows and dwell in my misery. Let me put you down. Let me figure out ways I can put you down. And this is what they're saying. This is what they're doing. You guys out there that are struggling to rebuild your self-esteem or recognizing what I'm talking about tonight, about your self-esteem, it is time. It is time to figure out what it is that you got to do, that you need to do to get that back, to get your own identity back. You know, maybe I can still be a musician and, and I can figure out what part of it I want to be involved in and not be involved in. And the minute, you know, I have to deal with caca baloney, I don't think so, bud. It ain't going to go down that way. Okay. I'm older. Okay. Wiser. I'm not dealing with, with that. I don't deal with that crap any longer. All right. And I think this, this, this is really about paving your own way and not ever allowing. When someone's starting to make you doubt yourself and feel weird about yourself and bad about yourself and questioning yourself and getting, and then you notice that you stop doing things that God gave you as talents and, and strengths and hobbies and passions that you have, that is a very bad sign. It is time to reevaluate who's in your life, who stays, who goes. And what you've got to do is you've got to rebuild that self-esteem to, to be able to look in the mirror. Now, are you going to be the same person that you were before the narc? You know, maybe it was that intimate relationship. Usually the narcs that you're in an intimate relationship or, or you re you're recognizing later on in life it was a parent. It was a parent that was always putting you down and, and you finally figured it out and you now you're having that conversation with yourself. Do I get, do I go no t contact with this parent? Do I have to get rid of this person? But as you're figuring all that out, you, you, you have to realize that that is one of the most important things about healing. You have to rebuild your self-esteem. It's got to happen and you, you have to do that work to be able to look at yourself and say, well, I'm not the person I once was. And that's actually a good thing. I'm going to get back the parts of me that I missed, but I'm going to be a totally new version of myself than I've ever been to the point where I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to like what I see. And I'm going to be proud of what I see. And I'm going to enjoy this process that I put in the hard work and, and maintenance into getting that person and, 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 and building those goals for myself and going to the places I want to go. That's how it's got to be for you guys. It's how it's got to be. No more allowing anyone to come in and ruin that for you. I don't care who it is. They have, they are going to, they are going to hit the road, Jack, and that is the end of it. There's no getting around it. There's no question. There's no, uh, allowing it any longer. And that's my message tonight. And I hope it helps some of you out there, your self-esteem, the value of your worth and recognizing if you're starting to really change and you're starting to turn into someone you don't like, and you're starting to recognize you're, you're having some toxic traits yourself. Mm -mm. Got to do something and you got to do it right away because time is ticking. The time is ticking. The clock is ticking and you got to fix it. Life is short. You don't know when your last day is going to be here. And you, and I'd, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather go out 
being proud of all that I've accomplished and sitting back going, oh man, I wish that I had gotten out. I wish I had tried. I wish that I had worked on myself and not put my issues onto someone else again and again and again and hoping that they're going to fix the problem. No. Like I said before in my videos recently, sometimes we have to go to the desert and we have to stay there for a while until God's done what he needs to do for us and worked on those areas and fixed it so that we can be the best version of ourselves we've ever been. That's my message tonight. I am Trace Face. It's time we all face the truth together.